Hi, what's up? I'm Channel Pup, the mascot for the level-headed fanboy. The Flash movie is just around the corner. And yes, I will be going to see it, and I'll let you guys know what I think about it as and when, but I figured in anticipation for that, let's rank all of the live-action Batman suits. And I'm realizing how surreal it is that I'm saying that in celebration of a Flash movie. What a bizarre outcome for the Flash's very first big screen adventure. But obviously, Batman is playing a major role in that movie. He's getting a bunch of new bat suits, which brings the total to 25 live action on screen bat suits. And today, I'm gonna rank them all. And there's gonna be some in here that you might not have thought of. So sit tight because you're probably gonna end up with some surprises. Once again, this is all just my personal opinion. So if you disagree rather than whinge about it, why not make your own ranking video and get some YouTube ad revenue? So then I can whinge about your opinion. And then you'll see just how stupid I look. Tell me, did you subscribe? You will. And you'd better not forget to hit that like button as well. This video is not sponsored by Wayne Enterprises or LexCorp. So check out the patron link in the description below and consider making a monthly pledge. Men are still good. Coming in at number 25 is the Batsuit from Gotham, The Beginning. I've heard some interesting defenses for this suit, being that it's like his first Batsuit, so it's probably not gonna look as good as later ones. But bear in mind, Bruce Wayne is a billionaire at this point. He is an adult at this point. I don't buy this as like a practical hodgepodge thing. It's not like he's, you know, combine combats with like a helmet and put ears on that or anything like that. It doesn't really look like a makeshift suit. It doesn't look like an expensive movie magic suit either. It just looks like crap. I don't mind the idea of a makeshift bat suit. In fact, I love it when superhero costumes have a more homemade aesthetic to them. This just looks like Bruce or Lucius Fox or whoever made this had no understanding of what body parts need armor how to make the armor look flexible and convincing. Why does the dude have a pizza on his lower torso? And that cowl is just desperate looking. One bit of credit I guess I can give this suit is it is the very first live action gray and blue bat suit since the 1960s. And I am happy to see that color scheme come back, but it's one of those instances where no amount of great color schemes could save this design. I understand that Gotham was just a TV series. They already had a lot of costumes in this finale episode, so they probably had to work with what they had remaining for this Batsuit, which was only going to appear for a couple of frames. But it's like, if you can't afford to make an armored suit, then maybe go back to basics, because Batman would look more dignified in a spandex outfit with minimal armaments than he would this. I mean, look at any Alex Ross image of Batman. Like, that's presumably just like a spandex suit. It's fine. For what this was here, for this ending stinger, that would have been fine. Heck, you know, I understand it's not very practical, but at the same time, the less protection a bat suit has, the more I'm inclined to believe that he's a very formidable combatant. Now, I do want to know, I'm not really pointing fingers of blame at anyone for this design, because apparently Warner Brothers were very rigid with their requirements for the Gotham TV series and the TV bat embargo. You're not really supposed to show Batman in live action on TV for some reason. So they had this ridiculous requirement that the Batsuit in Gotham was not supposed to really resemble any Batsuit in live action or in illustration. So how do you kind of work around that and make something that still looks like Batman? They apparently had to really negotiate hard just to get a bat symbol on his chest. Warner Brothers, man, just ugh. Coming in at number 24 is another TV Batsuit, this time the Titan's bat suit. Now, yes, this one is very low on the list, but I'm actually not even mad about this because this suit is not designed to be seen clearly at any stage. It's a basic armor outfit with a Halloween Batman cowl over it. But again, there's a bat embargo when it comes to TV, so you were never actually meant to get a clear look at this suit. The only detailed images being behind the scenes images. This existed purely just to create silhouettes and it works perfectly fine for that. But I did want to include this on this list because it is a bat suit. And it's the kind of thing where, yeah, when you do catch a good look at it in behind the scenes stuff, it's not a great suit. Take away the cowl and it doesn't even look like a bat suit, and that is because it's just not meant to serve that purpose. I'm not mad about it like I am with the Gotham suit. What I'm more mad about is the fact that it actually looks better than the Gotham bat suit. In fact, you know what? If you paired this cowl, which is just a party city kind of cowl, with the Gotham bat suit, you'd actually have something reasonable. I'm sure the Gotham crew already thought of that, and it's just, yeah, Warner Brothers. Coming in at number 23, we have the Ice Suit 
from Batman and Robin. What a disaster. Now, truth be told, I like Batman and Robin. I think it's a really fun movie. And it makes no bones about just being this massive toy commercial to the extent that like this suit here is usually like what you would get when like the toy line is just kind of out of ideas. When it's like, okay, we've got 20 slots to fill. There's only like three villains in this movie and one bat suit. So we've got to add like a whole bunch of extra bat suits with gimmicks. This is like that gimmick bat suit if it actually made it into a film. And I kind of don't hate it for that. I respect the tenacity and honesty. And the reason it comes so low on this list is just because the other suits are just better, but like, I don't hate this. To the extent that I've got a Funko Pop of this bat suit. As soon as I saw that was a thing that existed, I picked that up and a Mr. Freeze Funko Pop as well because I love Batman and Robin and I did want it to get some representation on my display. This movie really should have achieved cult classic status by this point. Why are we so behind as a species? But okay, what we have here is the sonar suit from Batman Forever reverse engineered into a merchandising chip. It's been spray painted into this kind of blue, blue purple color scheme and it's now got this like ice pattern all over the suit with these bright silver highlights. Does it look good? No, no, it doesn't look good. It's tacky, it's gaudy, and it's fantastic. It's no secret that Batman and Robin was not the film Joel Schumacher wanted to make. He was working with a lot of rigid requirements from <sighs> the usual suspect, Warner Brothers. But I have endless, profound respect for the unapologetic movie he made within those requirements. Everything about it, including presenting, with no apology, a bat suit that is made to be a toy. I understand at the time people were expecting a proper Batman movie, like a follow-up to kind of the Keaton universe, and Batman Forever was kind of a midway point, but then we just went completely to this. I understand why this was all received so badly at the time, but come on, guys, come on. Batman and Robin's not hurting anyone anymore. This image, this suit, all of this is doing no damage to the Batman's reputation at this point. So I'm just gonna enjoy the heck out of it. Coming in at number 22, we have the blue black suit from Batman and Robin. And yeah, they wanted to incorporate a little blue back onto the bat suit, akin to the comics, but you know what kind of makes me a little sad is that they didn't go all the way and make it gray and blue. It's all well and good in the behind the scenes where the designers are saying, oh yeah, we want to get the blue back on the bat suit because more like the classic, but you know, it would be more like the classic if it wasn't entirely blue. Now, what we have here is basically a recolor of the panther suit from Batman Forever, the movie that came before it. And we will talk about that when we get there. But this suit, yeah, it veered away from kind of the all black suits that we had before, going for something all blue. But it is all just the one color. The belt is blue, the bat symbol is blue, everything about it is blue. Listen up, here's a story about a little guy who lives in a blue world, and all day and all night and everything he sees is just blue like him, inside and outside. Now, given that this is just a repaint of the panther suit, all of the stuff that I didn't like about the panther suit is still here. Except now it's all one color and it's a color I like less than the original panther bat suit. Putting blue on the bat suit was a nice idea, just making it all blue, I don't care for at all. I don't quite get why this is the suit that gets all the flack for having nipples on it when the suit before it, the panther suit, was the first one to do the nipples. But I digress, I think I'm gonna save a lot of what I have to say about this suit beyond just the color of it for when we get to the panther bat suit on this list. Because outside of the colors, I don't have anything to say about this suit that I wouldn't just say about the panther suit. What I will say is George Clooney looks really good in this cowl. I just think the eye cutouts are the perfect shape for his eyes and uh, I just think his jaw goes really nicely in the bat suit. I mean, look, George Clooney's a handsome looking guy, so it stands to reason that he would look as good as he does in the bat suit. But I'll say that, like, I really like the cowl on this suit, and I just think it's a perfect fit for George Clooney, as George Clooney's a perfect fit for that cowl. All right, coming in at number 21 is the panther suit from Batman Forever. See, we made it. You didn't have to wait long. So what we have here is very much a reworking of the Michael Keaton bat suit from the Tim Burton Batman movies. In that you've got a rubber suit in an all black color scheme. This is very much an evolution of that. But Joel Schumacher as a director was kind of all about the beauty of the human form. He liked to kind of compare Batman and Robin to kind of like the Greek gods, as there were a lot of like Greek god-like statues around Gotham as well. That was just kind of his aesthetic for Batman. 
And that's made its way over to the bat suit as well, as rather than looking like an armor or something like that, it looks more like an oiled up naked male body. For one, rubber muscles are back on the suit. They've gone away from the armor plating from Batman Returns and gone back to rubber muscles, except this time they are far more accentuated. These muscles are far more defined far more ripply, and because they're kind of accentuating those parts of the male anatomy, yeah, the suit also has nipples. I I've seen a lot of people say, if the nipples are gone, this suit would be perfectly fine, but I feel like the nipples are just a symptom of the design philosophy to this bat suit, which I really don't like. I don't think the bat suit should look like a naked body covered in oil. Accentuating this further is that the suit is in a much shinier black than previous bat suits, but also a much darker black too. I kind of like how dark it is, but like the shininess of it makes the abs look even shinier and more prominent. That's the purpose it kind of serves, and it is all in service of Batman looking more like kind of a Greek god. I can see the logic behind it, it's just, it's not something I really like. I mean, the other thing is as well, in universe, how does this work? Is he really just wearing a rubber suit that has just these sculpted abs onto it? Or are we to believe that he's wearing kind of like a latexy stuff and his abs are just that pronounced that they're just poking out of it? Like, I can't really get a vibe on what this suit is in universe. You've also got that problem of it looking kind of stocky as well because where the belt is placed, it means that the abs have to be like halfway up the chest and it makes for a very kind of stocky looking Batman. The Panther suit doesn't really do it for me. I don't hate it, I don't think it's bad as such, I just think it's a design philosophy that doesn't really work for Batman personally. Coming in at number 20 is the aquatic suit from The Flash. This suit is in the Michael Keaton Bruce Wayne's Hall of Bat Suits. So no, we're definitely not gonna see Michael Keaton actually wear it. But hey, let's have fun with this. Let's talk about this suit here. It's fun to see a Keaton Universe Bat Suit that is made with a specific purpose in mind. What we have here looks fairly practical. It's nice and armored around the chest section. I like the oxygen tank. But it also retains that kind of Burtonverse aesthetic as well. It's in all black, but with gold highlights, which actually look really nice. Particularly these gold knee pads and this sort of gold ventilation around the suit. Also these golden eyes as well. I like the fact that that classic round bat emblem is also still on display here. I don't have a huge deal to say about this one, but I am definitely wondering what the purpose of this was. Like if at some stage, in the Burtonverse, Batman would have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aquaman or something. Coming in at number 19 is the motocross suit from The Flash, as worn by Ben Affleck's uh, stunt double. I don't believe Ben Affleck ever actually wore this suit. And I'm sad to report that Batfleck's final appearance, he's gonna be wearing probably my least favorite Batfleck suit. And he's not even being accompanied by his own theme music because Warner Brothers, they can't shake their boner for the Danny Elfman theme, but screw Junkie XL's contributions, I guess. I'm sure the scene will be good, it's just a shame to see Batfleck not really go out in his signature style. Wearing this suit here. Now, you can see that Batfleck is wearing his iconic suit, beneath a load of motocross armor. Now this is far from the first time Batfleck has worn armaments over the top of his regular suit. Of course we've got like the tactical suit from Justice League and the mech suit from Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. But in those cases, it looked like the armor was a part of that design. Here though, it doesn't look like this armor was made for this particular bat suit. It looks like they took a bat suit and they put a motocross harness over it. And the worst thing about this is that this motocross harness completely swallows this Batsuit whole. How does the biggest, fattest Batman emblem manage to get so lost in this design? I really kind of, I get why they put it on hinges so it doesn't break up that Bat logo, but I'd rather just break up the Bat logo than have it on this silly looking hinge thing here, where it gets completely lost in the armaments. Also, only his upper torso is protected, his lower torso is still bare. Now, I could get past some of this stuff, but what I can't get past is the thick honeycomb structure going around the sides of his torso. It just looks really, really messy. I understand that they needed Batfleck to be wearing armor if he's going on the Bat Cycle. I understand what they were going for here, but they already had a much better armored suit with Batman's tactical suit. Also the cowl. I didn't think I'd be complaining about this, but here I am. The cowl, the headpiece looks fine. What I don't like is where it cuts off at the shoulders, has this incredibly wide berth at the bottom, and it's squared off at the sides. It looks terrible. It doesn't flow into the cape, 
and it has way too wide of a berth where it cuts off around the shoulders. It looks so bad. With that said, there are some positives to this design. I think the bat bodysuit underneath the armor actually looks really nice. It looks cleaner and smoother. It, it doesn't look like that sort of tattered bat suit that he wore before. It looks like a renewed version of it, which I really like. I like the fact that the belt is a little brighter as well. And there does appear to be just a tiny little hint of blue on this suit as well. But no amount of nice colors can save this design. The most egregious part of it is definitely the upper torso. But there's just too much wrong with this. And it's a shame to see that Batflex's final appearance will be in his worst suit yet. What a crying shame. Coming in at number 18 is the costume from the Columbia Batman serials. This was of its time, that needs to be stated. I'm not gonna be the kind of jackass that just looks at this thing and dismisses it purely based on it being old, being of its time. Yeah, it's dated, it has aged. But sometimes when things date and age, it gets kind of even more appeal for just like the style of the time and how they worked within the limitations of the time as well. And you'll see that come into play later on on this list. But for now, we've got this suit here and yeah. A lot of people just forget to even include this suit on their ranking. Now I tell you what, the suit itself is actually pretty solid. It's kind of this very basic strongman outfit, but that does work and it, again, works a whole lot better than the bat suit from Gotham. But I do have to ask, when it comes to even the limitations of the time, could they not have done better with the mask? Take the mask away and you've actually got a really good bat suit. Like, it's really cool, but the mask. The mask is terrible. The ears just point out on the top of his head, and they point outwards a little akin to the first appearance Batman design, but by this point the bat ears had been kind of perfected as being upright. Now here's the thing, I actually think the first appearance Batman design can work really well. I actually don't mind the pointing outward ears, but I, I just don't like how they've been executed here. I kind of get that they're of their time, but like them looking like these little sausages just looks really funny. And I, I you know, I, I don't know if there was any other way they could have done it. I think, you know, having something a little flatter, maybe, something a little more helmet-like would have worked. Hindsight is 2020, but it, it's just the one thing on this suit that looks kind of bad. And the cowl is probably arguably the most important part of a bat suit. If I just, if I look at the suit like this, just crop out the cowl there. Oh, that looks really good. That, like, wow, I'm excited, but that is just... Then there's that. It's kind of like the Flash suit in the new movie, actually. Like, where it's like, you see the suit itself, and you're like, okay. Then you see the mask, and you're like, ugh. I give it complete credit for looking as good as it did at the time, and I, again, the bodysuit looks fantastic. But yeah, the cowl. <laughs> what a mess. Still better than the Gotham cowl, though. That needs to be said. Coming in at number 17 is the Arrowverse bat suit, as not worn by Batman himself at any stage. But it has been worn by Batwoman, and it has also been worn by a mannequin. Now with the CW, you never know if the costume is gonna be a thick, baggy, leathery piece of garbage, or actually kind of, okay, you know? And this bat suit fits in the category of, okay, I can kinda see what you're doing there. It's in an all black color scheme, which I can kinda give or take. I always prefer when you got a little gray in there, but this is fine, this works just okay. The bat symbol on the chest does get a bit lost in the all black, but I mean, it's there. And the suit just is kind of a few layers of like leathery stuff and more clothy areas as well, but it doesn't look like a mess, you know? It, it looks like these things are placed with a certain level of deliberation, you know? They overall keep it simple, and I can appreciate that. Again, if you're working on like quite a strict budget, it's better to have something that is simple but effective than attempt to go full movie magic and just completely balls it up like the Gotham bat suit, which is becoming a punchline, it seems. The cowl is pretty interesting as well, in that, like, it's a very rounded cowl. It's very kind of curvy looking. And the way the bat ears go up kind of gives me kind of more Wolverine vibes than it does Batman, but it, it still looks like a Batman cowl. Don't get it twisted. The Arrowverse bat suit, particularly when compared to the Gotham bat suit, kind of goes to show that yeah, it's better to keep things simple. I do wish we could have seen a Bruce Wayne wear this suit and we could have seen this suit in action, but Warner Brothers do be like that. This was really there as a piece of world building and I, I think it works fine for that. I don't have much to say beyond that. I think my biggest criticism is, yeah, the bat symbol on the chest gets a little lost in the monotony of the black color scheme, but it's fine. As far as, you know, all one color bat suits go, this is one of the better ones. In at number 16 is the Mark II bat suit from The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. Now, I do understand that this is something of a fan favorite, and I understand, yeah, it, it does look like a 
realistic bat suit. It's more like a kind of a spelunking armor, kind of a bit more motocrossy in kind of areas. But I think this aesthetic is kind of Marmite in that you kind of either love it or you hate it. Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, they are brilliant movies, do not get it twisted. I've had people ask me, Pup, why don't you like The Dark Knight movies? I do. I love The Dark Knight. And Batman Begins. I don't love The Dark Knight Rises, but I do like it. I think it's fine. But here's the thing. The Nolan Batman aesthetic, I'm not gonna try and make any objective claims and say it's not good, it works for what it is, but it doesn't do it for me. I prefer when Batman looks just a bit more Batman. Christopher Nolan has a very impressionistic relationship with the source material in these movies, so with the Batsuit you get something that kind of resembles the Batman outline, but everything within it is very different. And I feel like Batman, as a design, gets a bit lost in the Nolan aesthetic. This design just doesn't really look like Batman to me. He's got the ears, he's got the cape, but like everything in between that is very different. Now again, I'm not trying to make any kind of objective criticism here or say they shouldn't do that. It's one of those things where in the grand scheme of things, I'm grateful that Christopher Nolan left his thumbprint on Batman. I appreciate this as a part of Batman's history, but in a vacuum, I'm just not big on this suit. I think there's a little too much going on with the armor. I really don't like the shape of the cowl and how the ears kind of horn over and sit on the top of his head. Like with other Batsuits on this list, I'm not a huge fan of the black on black. That's not really how I would like to see Batman done. And it doesn't really have that imposing theatricality of Batman, you know? The cape just being this clothy thing that just sits on his back as opposed to being this big theatrical piece that outlines the entire bat silhouette and it flows in the wind and it drapes over his shoulders sometimes. It's practicality at the expense of spectacle. Another sad thing about this though is that Christian Bale really, really worked out for the role as Batman. Like, the guy was built, but that physique gets lost in this costume. There's just so many straps and armaments and pieces, and I get they wanted to kind of prioritize movement, but, but you lose kind of that chunky, imposing look. What you got is a suit that's just very difficult for me to track, you know? They wanted them to look more ninja-like, and they absolutely succeeded at that. I think this suit succeeds completely at everything it's trying to do. The only bit I would say is necessarily bad is, like, the jigsaw puzzle pieces going all over the legs. Like, uh, that doesn't look practical, that just looks fragmented for the sake of fragmented. But yeah, on a whole, it's, it's fine, it's just an aesthetic that doesn't do it for me, you know? Coming in at number 15 is the Nightmare Suit from Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and Zack Snyder's Justice League. As cool as I think Batman wearing a massive desert trench coat looks, there's also a part of me that finds it more kind of funny than imposing. It kind of feels like a fan-made Batman meets Mad Max Fury Road creation. Like, this is like a very deliberately badass re-adaptation of the Batsuit, and I... I kind of appreciate it, but at the same time, like... Eh, it ain't replacing a proper Batsuit anytime soon. It's the kind of thing I would have thought was the coolest thing ever back when I was like 16. But now, eh, not so much. The suit underneath it is the default Batflex suit, and I still like that suit. I like it without the trench coat, and I like it with the trench coat. The cowl, all of that looks good. The Batman paraphernalia looks good. I just, I find it quite funny seeing that version of Batman rocking up in desert combats and a massive trench coat. Again, it's Zack Snyder being very unapologetically rule of cool, and I respect it for that, but I also think there's quite a bit of unintentional comedy here. Coming in at number 14 is the Sonar Suit from Batman Forever. Crazy to think that this was the first bat suit since the serials to take the bat emblem outside of the oval, and I really like how dramatic it looks as it spreads across the chest. I also appreciate that we've gone away from the rubber muscles for this suit and gone back to something a bit more technical looking. And we've got grey on the bat suit again. Yay, except where's the black gone? This was a thing in that era of Batman. It was always like, oh, we're putting gray on the bat suit. It's all gray. We're putting blue on the bat suit. It's all blue. When all I wanted was a gray and blue bat suit. Ugh, it was all or nothing back then. Now, this is basically the same suit as the ice suit. This is the suit that would get reworked into the ice suit in the next movie. So it's that, but without all of the ice paraphernalia and it's in the all gray color scheme. And I kind of like how there's kind of a look of exposed muscle, like muscle without skin in some ways. How it wraps around the abdominals. But it's also got more of a nodal look to it as well. And putting vents around the ears as well is not a bad idea because how the hell does Batman hear anyone in that cowl? Is it a tad over designed? 
<laughs> yes, yes it is. Does it look a little overly bright in the film as well? Yeah, you need some black or blue to cut through that color. But it ain't a bad suit, you know? In a different color scheme, this would actually probably look really good. Coming in at number 13 is the Mark I bat suit from Batman Begins. And aside from looking a little rubbery, this was still the better suit than the Mark II in my opinion. The armor was much cleaner, it retained a little more of that theatrical Batman look. I love the bat emblem on the chest. It just, I guess it looks a little difficult to move around in. It's hard to believe that Batman would be able to do all this ninja stuff in a suit that looks this thick and it does look very breathable, you know? And considering Nolan's movies were going more for practicality, it makes sense that they would have changed it to the Mark II. Yeah, the Mark II is much more in line with Nolan's vision, just as The Dark Knight is a much more Nolan movie than Batman Begins is. But this suit just looks more like Batman to me. I think the nodal armor plating looks really cool. And what's really interesting about this suit is it's not actually all black. The cape, the cowl, the gauntlets, the logo are all a much darker shade than the actual armor body pieces. But you can kind of only see that under very specific lighting, otherwise it just looks like it's all black, but no, the bodysuit is actually a very, very, very dark grey, almost black. And I do wish it were a little lighter because the bat emblem does get a bit lost in this suit as well. What is it with bat suits and having the bat emblem getting lost in it? The only thing that lets this suit down for me is the cowl. I really don't like the Nolan style cowls. I understand they're meant to look a bit more animal, they're meant to look a bit more feral, but his head just looks a bit phallic. Especially here. I mean, they, they definitely improve things on the Mark II as far as the cowl goes, but I'm just not big on the horned over ears. And yeah, there is a problem here with the neck just looking a bit chody. On a whole though, I can see what they were going for with this suit, and I do like it. I think speaking objectively, like taking into account what Nolan was going for, the Mark II suit was a step in the right direction. It's more authentic to Nolan's vision, but this suit here just looked nicer in my opinion. I think they did the right thing in changing it, but I still think it's a downgrade. In at number 12 is the Nightmare suit, but from the Keaton Batman universe. Now, I don't know if that's definitely the purpose of this suit or not, and these suits that are on display in the sort of Hall of Bat suits, they are just kind of things to tell some of the stories of what Keaton's Batman's been up to in the time that we've been away from him. Here we have a suit that looks like a knight's armor. Really living up to the Dark Knight branding, huh? And this is the first sort of Burton vs. Bat suit to have kind of a more heavy armored look to it. But I like how we don't lose track of that Burton aesthetic either. The mask is still very much a Burton vs. Batman mask. He's got this chunky collar around the front of the cowl, which displays that classic Batman oval symbol. Like Batflex Nightmare suit, he's got goggles that he wears over his cowl. But also, this guy means business. He's serious about fighting. You do not want to get kneed in the nuts by this guy because he's got blades on his knee pads. I love the practicality of this utility belt as well. This just looks like a guy you don't want to mess with. And also, it's cool to see some grey on a Keaton Batsuit. This looks like a very battle-hardened version of that Keaton Batsuit, and it's safe to assume that whatever threat he made this suit for must have been serious business. It serves as a piece of visual storytelling, but it would have been seriously cool to have seen Keaton actually wear this suit. Coming in at number 11 is the Mark I suit worn by Michael Keaton in Batman 89. This was the first time we'd seen a really cinematic looking, very serious, movie magic looking Batman. I think the stylistic decision to put him in all black and take the grey off of the bat suit it works for Tim Burton's very gothic take, and as it is, this suit still immediately recognizable as Batman. This was the first time we'd gone away from that more clothy look of bat suits and gone for something a bit more, I guess, practical looking. I say that, but like in real life, this suit had like the mobility of a slug that had been dipped in honey and forced to crawl through soil. It must have been hot as hell in there heavy as hell, given that they needed a crane to get him in and out of the Batmobile. But the Burton movies were always about theatrics and style, they were never about practicality and realism, and this suit works really well for that. And all things considered, this Batsuit still looks good today, it has aged really, really well. Has it been improved upon since? Yes. But it still looks good. It was also cool to get really nice long ears on the Batsuit as well, this was the first time that Bat silhouette really, really looked undeniably like Batman. You didn't have to look very closely to see him, they were just right there clear as day, from any and all angles. The cape was big and imposing. 
That being said, yes, as I say, there are things that have been improved upon since. This was our first time getting rubber muscles, and they're nowhere near as egregious as they'd go on to be on, like, the panther suit, for example. And I can kind of believe this a bit more as a piece of armor, but even then, still, I'm not fond of rubber muscles on superhero costumes. I would always rather it be just kind of flat on the tummy region, or just go for kind of an armored look. But it does make sense as to why they did this, because it does reflect kind of the Batman illustrations you'd see in like a Neil Adams Batman comic. Also, the bat emblem on the chest has two extra legs, but that's just such a nitpick, and I, I don't know if anyone would have cared at the time. As this was still a lot closer to the bat emblem of the time than anything that had come before. Also, this suit just always looked dusty, and like, that's not terrible, because... This kind of Batman here, I can believe that his suit would just be covered in dust at all times. And the cowl didn't fit him brilliantly. I think uh, the Weekly Planet put it the best in here. It looks like there's a big gap around the chin. We could just stick a hand grenade in there. No idea how they landed on hand grenade as the example they'd use for that, but hats off to them, that's hilarious. Those guys are probably some of my favorite YouTube personalities. They're hilarious. Yet, yeah, some artistic liberties were taken, and it does show some age, but all things considered, it's just undeniably Batman and it does still look good. And considering this thing came out in 1989, that's a really big achievement. Coming in at number 10 is the Mark II Michael Keaton Batsuit from Batman Returns, where pretty much all of my complaints regarding the 1989 version were completely addressed and fixed. The rubber muscles, gone. The dusty look, gone. The bat emblem on the chest, they got rid of the extra legs. The cowl fits a lot better. And I really like the design of the armor plating on the torso. It's nice and subtle, it's very clean, it keeps the shapes nice and simple. The only thing there is that it, it does still look like one piece of sculpted rubber. These don't look like actual armor layers, but I could kind of get past that. That was of its time. That being said though, this Batsuit as well still looks good today. If the 89 Batsuit still looked good today, this one looks even better. This one would probably fit in with more modern superhero costume sensibilities. It's just an upgrade in every way. Coming in at number 9 is the Mech Suit from Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Just because Batman has kryptonite, meaning he can punch the crap out of him, that doesn't mean that Superman can't punch back when he's recovered, so Batman's gonna need a little more reinforcement. And this is the chunkiest, most imposing looking armored suit Batman has ever worn. This suit looks hard hitting. So what we have here is kind of an adaptation of the Dark Knight Returns Batman battle armor. And I think this is an excellent modernization of it. I love that sort of brushed metal silver look, the chunkiness of the cowl and how the ears kind of cut off at the top and those big, bright blue eyes. He looks like he jumped straight out of a late 90s comic book. But he also just looks invincible. This armor completely swallows Batman whole. And it looks like if he were to punch you in the face, his arm would just go right through your skull. This guy just looks terrifying. Coming in at number 8 is the tactical suit from Zack Snyder's Justice League. This suit really proved to me that a bat suit can only look as good as who's filming it. Because in the Joss Whedon version of Justice League, this suit looked like chunky, immobile, goofy looking garbage. And it's because it wasn't lit right, it wasn't graded right, it wasn't shot right. But get the lens of Zack Snyder and Fabian Wagner on this thing and it looks sick. You've got Batfleck running around fighting off parademons. It looks flexible, it doesn't look overly chunky. This is a much less chunky arm armor than what we have with the mech suit. This is, in my opinion, like what Nolan did to the bat suit, but kind of done in a way that feels more in line with what I would like to see from Batman, as you've still got that grey and black color scheme. The armaments just look a bit more simplified than they do on the Nolan suit, but he still cuts out this very imposing looking figure. Batman still looks incredibly imposing in it. The goggles? Okay, that's very much Zack Snyder's kind of love for Watchmen starting to bleed through, but it makes sense in this context. Batman is going into a war zone. He's dealing with mother boxes and lasers and aliens, so yeah, you're gonna want to protect the eyes. Gonna be a lot of bright lights in that fight, and yeah, there were a lot of bright lights in that fight. This may have been a suit used for a very specific purpose in these movies. It might have been an alternate look, it wasn't the main Batflex suit, but I would have accepted this. Because yes, while it is clearly more armored than the normal Batflex suit, it still looks like Batman. It still has a very classic Batman-y look, but it just looks very tactical. It does what it says on the tin. I can give or take the bat shades, but still, I think this is a great suit. Coming in at number seven is the Bill Finger homage suit from The Flash. 
as worn by Michael Keaton, but we're not going to see that. It just it would have been worn by that version of Batman. I'm not sure exactly where in the timeline this would have been worn. Obviously, in the Burtonverse, we never actually saw Batman's early years. But like, okay, in say Batman Odyssey, we saw that in Batman's earliest days, he did use guns. And this suit here does have holsters for guns. So maybe this would have been the suit he wore before he got his no guns policy. Maybe this would have been the suit Michael Keaton wore at the very beginning. Or perhaps he went off the deep end. Maybe this was what he wore during his BVS arc where he did decide to kill people. I don't know. I'm guessing we're not going to get answers to this in the film. I I'm sure that this is just a piece of visual storytelling and you can fill in the blanks yourself. But what I especially like about this is it's the first appearance suit made using parts of other bat suits. It's full of homages to different bat suits from Batman's history, yet it's still the first appearance suit. I love that we have here the outward pointing ears of the first appearance bat suit, but then the actual body armor is an homage to the Arkham games, particularly with the seams going down by the side of the abs. And it is gray and black, so big points for using the classic color scheme. But another thing I absolutely adore about this suit is how they used the 1966 Adam West bat symbol on the chest. Now that's not necessarily accurate to the first appearance. I'm guessing like what they're going for here is that the Keaton Batman always has the yellow oval. But how do you represent that this was very early in the lineage? You give it the Adam West bat symbol. Beautiful. A positively wonderful homage. This suit is awesome. I would be so happy if we could see this suit in action, but I highly doubt it. I'm certainly not taking that for granted. Coming in at number six is the costume worn by Adam West in the Batman 66 TV series. Does it show its age? Yes. Sentimentality plays a bit of a role in this one being where it is. This is by no means an objective list. At the same time though, it's fairly practical in that Batman's able to move around with ease and he's able to turn his neck and everything. He's got more mobility in this than you would get in the more movie magic looking bat suits, that's for sure. Albeit absolutely zero protection, but does that really matter because the Adam West Batman is OP as hell and has a gadget to override any kind of hardship that he could ever go through. Wanna break his back? He's probably got a back repair spray in his utility belt somewhere. This show was just primetime kitsch of the 1960s and this bat suit absolutely belongs to that. It's all about the spectacle of seeing Batman. And yeah, the classic bat suit of the time is adapted completely unapologetically for the screen here. And he looks like Batman. He's wearing a gray and blue suit, but like where you'd get like the shadowing over Batman's face, you've got like a black faceplate complete with eyebrows and a nose outline. The yellow belt doesn't look weathered or bronzed or anything, it's just a yellow utility belt, it's just like that. The bat symbol on the chest looks really tasteful and fashionable, they've kept things pretty simple there. It's a clothy suit that's just made to look cool, and it does look cool in my opinion. Batman looks like an exciting swashbuckling hero in this suit. This one was made purely for the theatrics and it was made within the limitations of the time, but it looked really good in my opinion. Like, I acknowledge I'm biased, okay? I, I don't care much for the Nolan aesthetic, but the 60s aesthetic, I adore it. Practicality was never this show's concern. Batman looking intimidating was never this show's concern. So what you end up with is just unquestionably a superhero. And I love this design just for that. I think there's also just ways you could kind of modernize this suit though, and you wouldn't actually have to do that much to make this kind of fit in like a modern day aesthetic. Treat it as kind of like more like a uniform, make the suit more something akin to like Captain America's suit, and this cowl could easily be turned into like a form of helmet. Like it wouldn't take much to adapt this into a more modern day look, and I think it would still look good. So yes, while it is a piece of classic 1960s kitsch, I also think all things considered, it's aged pretty well. Coming in at number five is the Mark III suit as worn by Michael Keaton for The Flash. Now, when I say these Mark numbers, that's in a meta sense, all right? Because presumably this is the latest suit he's made. This is the suit that stands front and center in the hall of Batman suits. This is a perfect modernization of the Michael Keaton Batsuit. It retains all of the design elements that made the Keaton Batsuit iconic, but it's done with modern sensibilities. You still have an all black bat suit with a yellow oval around the bat emblem and that distinct sort of Keaton look. You've still got the cowl very much the same, except now the armor looks a bit more layered, a bit more functional, less black rubber, a bit more plated, a bit more mobile looking. And the whole thing looks just a little bit more lightweight while still having that imposing Batman look to it. I like how the armor on the chest also looks a little bit thicker than before. Believably, this could be like a metal piece. One thing I will say is I do miss the bronzy gold golden belt 
At the same time, I like the little silver highlights they've added here. It means that the belt doesn't get lost in the suit. It would have been easy to just stick Batman in his return suit and call it a day because I still think that suit does look good even by today's standards. But this is just even better. It's like the suit reworked with modern sensibilities while still looking like the Tim Burton bat suit. It doesn't lose anything that made that suit great. That is how you bring back a design. It's got just enough practicality to be convincing in today's climate, while still unquestionably Burton's Batman. Coming in at number four is Batfleck Mark I from Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and Suicide Squad 2016. But we don't talk about Suicide Squad 2016. I cannot stress enough the joy I felt when this costume was first revealed and we got ourselves something that was unapologetically classic Frank Miller Batman. Gone was the seemingly unending era of all black bat suits, ushering in an era of the grey and black making a big comeback. Finally! The very techie contemporary armoured look of like the Nolan universe was gone, in favour of him wearing something that just looked like kind of layered Kevlar. And again, the less armoured Batman is, the more I believe that he's a formidable opponent, the more confident he looks. This Batsuit just took things back to basics, and I really appreciate that. You've got all of the theatrics you could possibly want. Batman has never looked more imposing than this. The guy's built like a brick shithouse, accentuated by the muscle suit he's wearing, but they don't go over the top in trying to define those muscles. Also, holy crap, they managed to get neck mobility out of a rubber cowl, which has a still a quite thick neck. In fact, a little too thick on this one. Looks a little bit chody around the neck department. I also love the very square utility belt with the very big pouches as well. Looks very practical. The very bronze look of the utility belt is also tasteful too, although they could afford to go just a little bit brighter, just a touch brighter, I think. Now, people are kind of mixed on the big wide bat emblem on the chest, but honestly, I think it looks really cool. It really complements the shape of Ben Affleck's chest and balances the gray with the black just right. The return to the short ears as well, very welcome. I feel like this suit tried to avoid building too much over Ben Affleck's existing hulking physique. So they didn't add any chunky armaments, they didn't give him massive long ears or anything like that. Ben Affleck is built like a Batman, so let's just stick him in a fairly basic suit. Something with no frills. I also love the aged look as well. The suit tells a story. It's got little bullet marks and little areas where it's been stitched up. On a whole, yeah, it's just a fantastic suit. And so, confidently, unapologetically, Frank Miller Batman. But you know what, it would also pass for a Jim Lee Batman too. Coming in at number three is Batflex Mark II suit from Zack Snyder's Justice League. And we're just gonna, we're gonna sweep the Joss Whedon cut under the rug. That one doesn't count. So this is an ever so slight tweak to the Mark I Batflex suit. Just ever so slight. And if you didn't point out the differences, I wouldn't necessarily notice them. But now he's got just a few little armor nodes on the suit. They are very, very, very subtle, which I really appreciate. They don't swallow the bat suit in any way. It's just now, yeah, you can see that there's very subtle plating underneath the abs of this suit. The shade of gray is quite a bit darker this time, which it, it looks a bit more harmonious with the black sections. It doesn't veer on looking too black. It just harmonizes the color of the suit a little bit more. And there's also an ever so slight blue tint to the grey sections. Okay, well, that, that's fine. I would have appreciated a slight blue tint to the black sections, but no, it's on the grey. But still, it, it's a very nice shade of grey that they picked here. But the big thing that kind of edges out the previous suit on this list for me is the fact that the cowl this time looks a lot less chody around the neck. The cowl doesn't swallow Ben Affleck's neck this time. It, it, it looks, you know, a bit more organic. Now, allegedly, like, the creators of the cowl in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice were not given credit, so they didn't come back for Zack Snyder's Justice League. So apparently Batman can't actually turn his neck in this cowl like he could in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, but I don't notice that because he appears to be turning his neck at times in this movie. Either that or Zack Snyder just does a very good job at covering up that little fact. Unlike Joss Whedon where in like the first scene you see Batman turn his entire upper body to look around and talk to a thug. The difference a good director makes, I guess. Like with a good enough director, it doesn't even matter if Batman can turn his neck or not. <sighs> I miss Zack Snyder. But I'm hopeful for the future. I'm hopeful for the future of the DC Universe. I'm hopeful for the future of Batman. Coming in at number two, and this does come from a place of bias, but hey, let's just go with it, is Keaton's blue and gray suit from The Flash. And no, he's not gonna be wearing this in the film. It's just a piece of background storytelling. 
which is a shame because this bat suit has given me everything I have ever asked for in a bat suit. We've got the gray and blue color scheme, okay? That is a big deal to me, and it looks so good on the Keaton Batsuit. The Keaton Batsuit was always very Neil Adamsy looking, and paired with the blue and grey colour scheme, it's a pure love letter to the Neil Adams era of Batman. We do unfortunately have the extra legs back on the Bat Emblem, which is what it is, I can look past that. But the utility belt has the big pouches on it, which I love. I love the big pouches on the utility belt, it just looks more practical than when they have the little capsules. Uh, the only thing I find a little questionable, I guess, is the... At first, I thought he had these rippling abs, but no. They are squared off armor plates on the abs, which is a lot better than the rubber muscles. I, I like how that looks. I like how there's very few lines or nodes going around, like the arms or the chest. It looks very clean, really nice. He's got the trunks, okay? Like, I'm, I'm fine with Batman having trunks. You know, it's like a kind of a practical look that he'd have, a, like, an extra armor piece around where the cock is. And, um, yeah, the cowl. It has these sort of eyebrows on it, it has these sort of like, you know, uh, grimacing kind of forehead. Which reminds me a lot of the Alex Ross Batman, the way he paints Batman's cow. This is it, this is just comic book Batman, this is the Batman I grew up with. Neil Adams Batman, and it's so good to just even see it at all, even if it's just in the background. But what a shame we're not actually going to see him wear this. I'm really hoping that DCU Batman under the James Gunn universe will have a grey and blue colour scheme. Because it works, you can't say it doesn't work, it absolutely does. This is Batman as I always imagined him as a little kid. Now the original plan for like Walter Hamada's DC universe was going to be that Michael Keaton would take up the reins as the main Batman of the universe. And if they were gonna do that, I would love to see him in this suit. I think, like, the main Batman should always have the most classic suit you can kind of get, or be the most archetypal Batman that you can get. This suit would have been perfect for that. They were gonna have him in the all black again. They were gonna keep the suit that they're keeping as his main suit in the Flash, but... This here, oh god, oh lordy. And in at number one is the suit worn by Robert Pattinson in The Batman. Now, I mentioned earlier that I love homemade looking suits, things that look like they've been sourced from actual things, and yes, this has the look of military combats paired with that sort of Batman-y look. It is a suit that tells a story, such as like how the combat pants kind of lace up at the sides, how the armor of the bat suit looks like it's been sourced from elsewhere, the belt looks like a very military belt, and then the cowl looks like something that's been stitched together by Bruce himself out of leather, and then you obviously have like metal plating underneath it, because that thing is bulletproof. But everything about this looks functional. From the piping on his gauntlets, to his utility belt, to how the bat symbol on his chest is a device that he can take out and it can work as like a knife. For cutting things like rope and stuff, not for cutting humans. Batman wouldn't do that. I love the very human look about the cowl this time. He doesn't have those scowling eyebrows or that animalistic look of like Nolan's Batman or Snyder's Batman. It's a much more relaxed looking face, but it's also very skull-like as well. It's no secret that they also took some inspiration from the Adam West cowl, and like I said, yes, that's a design that works really well when modernized. I also love how, like, to make the Batman silhouette, rather than having this big chunky neck, He's got a collar that goes around the neck instead. This is something that definitely would have helped the look of the Nolan suits, I think. Like, if you're gonna go for a nice, movable neck and it's more thin, I, I think you should have, like, a collar there to still give him that imposing Batman look. But I also just love the versatility of this Batsuit as well. It can showcase a more vulnerable-looking Batman while still being convincing as this tower of power that Batman is, this imposing figure. It's a suit that allows Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson to do a lot of different things with this Batman. I said earlier that the less armor Batman has, the more intimidating he is from a perspective of like, yeah, he doesn't need the armor, he's a very competent brawler. And this is definitely a more armored Batman, but that's kind of what it's supposed to be. This is Batman in his early years as an unrefined Batman. That's kind of the appeal of the Robert Pattinson Batman. And I think this suit is perfect for that. Another thing I really love about this though is like, like with what Nolan was setting out to achieve, it's a very realistic, practical look for Batman. It's something that's been sourced from different places and it's all very believable, but that aesthetic doesn't swallow this looking like Batman either. This still looks like a quintessential Batman. The bat symbol may just be a device on his chest, but it still looks like a bat symbol. He's still in that quintessentially classic Batman grey and black colour scheme. And while this doesn't have like a bronzed or yellow belt or anything like that, there are little rusted yellow accents on this suit. 
both on the metal bat emblem and also on the metal belt buckle. So while it's clearly sourced from using actual bits of practical combat gear and other things, it still looks like they use that to create a classic quintessential bat suit. I just love how much this suit tells us about this character, how versatile the suit is for the storytellers. It might not be Batman as I always dreamed he'd look, but it's easily the most versatile Batman has ever looked. You don't completely lose Robert Pattinson's performance in this suit, so you can still convey vulnerability, you can still convey the rage, but also it can still look incredibly intimidating. This is just the bat suit that works on the most levels, in my opinion. And that's why I just think it's the absolute best of the best. But what do you guys think? How would your rankings go? What do you think of this video as well? Comment below, discuss. As always, if you enjoyed this video, you want to see more like it, be sure to hit subscribe, hit the like button. And before we dip, if you want your name in the credits of my videos, you can get that done over on my Patreon for as little as $1 a month and get access to additional content. And accordingly, the patrons in the $10 or above tiers get special shoutouts. This time, I'll be doing my best Christian Bale Batman impression. I pray my throat forgives me for this. Dare Denny, you garbage that kills for money. Kyle Bennett, why do you want to kill me? That Jordo, you'll be in a bad cell forever. KK, this city just showed you that it's full of people ready to believe it good. Legendary Ray Ray, where is she? Dr. SP here with your PSA for the week. Summer is officially here. Go enjoy the nice weather before it gets too hot. I'm not wearing hockey pads. Sergio, where's the trigger? Sir, is a skeptic. It's not who you are underneath, but what you do that defines you. I love the Boss Baby movies. I'm the biggest fan. You're not the hero Gotham deserves, but the hero it needs. Alright, thank god I'm done with that. In the $5 tier, we have Broski, SSS06, Dazzle Fizzle, and Council of Geeks. Thank you good folks so much for your generosity, and to those of you watching, well, thank you so much for doing so, and have a great day. Now get out of here, go on.